out this evening. Uh, check out the table by the front doors of the church. There are all kinds of things available there for you. The new um, devotion books are there and other things, so please take a look at that. And also check out the Water for Kids display in the back here as you leave. And um, if anyone is interested in the t-shirts, we're, we're sending in two separate orders because some of the pastors in our area really wanted their t-shirt uh, as soon as possible and so they can wear them to promote this. And so uh, we're sending in, Mel will be sending in one order on Monday, and then you'll have another chance a couple weeks later if you didn't get it in that soon. But um, if you want your shirt right away, there's order forms on the table, and you can get that to her. Um, I'm trying to think, I know there was something else I wanted to mention. Oh, uh, we won't be ushering anybody out this evening, so just uh, after the service, if you want to sit for a while, feel free, and if you are ready to leave, um, you can just make your own way out. Anything else I need to mention tonight? Okay, we are doing a series throughout these weeks uh, during Lent of Christ in the Old Testament. And last week we looked at Christ in creation. And if you weren't able to be here last week and you're interested in catching up on that background, uh, you can find that service on YouTube and you can find it on our church website. And if you don't want to mess with all that technology, you can just speak to me and I'll gladly hand you a paper copy also, anytime. I'm always happy to do that. So, all right. I invite you to join me in our opening litany. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh Lord, open my lips. Hurry to deliver me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Please join in our opening hymn, which is God Loved the World, number 323 in the Red Hymnal.
let us pray. Lord God, you have gathered us together to observe the Lenten journey. Encourage us in our disciplines of prayer, study, worship, giving, and serving. We pray that Christ, who humbled himself, taking on the form of a servant, might look upon us in mercy. May our lives be governed by the Holy Spirit, so that we may be kept steadfast in the faith, and at the last be exalted with you in eternity. For you live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is selections of the story of the flood from Genesis, and this is not the complete reading, so I encourage you when you go home, if you wish, to uh, get out your Bibles and read the entire narrative of the flood in Genesis 6 and 7. The Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made humankind on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the human beings I have created, people together with animals and creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw that the earth was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted its ways upon the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. Now I am going to destroy them along with the earth. Make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. For my part, I am going to bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of the birds according to their kinds, and of the animals according to their kinds, of every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind. Two of every kind shall come into you to keep them alive. Also take with you every kind of food that is eaten and store it up, and it shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. And Noah with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Of clean animals and of animals that are not clean and of birds and of everything that creeps on the ground, two and two, male and female, went into the ark with Noah as God had commanded Noah. And after seven days, the waters of the flood came on the earth. The rain fell on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. On the very same day, Noah with his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons entered the ark. They and every wild animal of every kind and all domestic animals of every kind and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and every bird of every kind, every bird, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued 40 days on the earth, and the waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. The waters swelled so mightily on the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. The waters swelled above the mountains, covering them 15 cubits deep. And all flesh died that moved on the earth. Birds, domestic animals, wild animals, all swarming creatures that swarm on the earth, and all human beings. Everything on dry land in whose nostrils was the breath of life died. He blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground, human beings and animals and creeping things and birds of the air. They were blotted out from the earth. 
Only Noah was left and those that were with him in the ark. Please join with me in responsibly reading Psalm 69. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I am weary with crying. My throat is parched. My eyes grow dim with waiting for my God. O oh God, you know my folly. The wrongs I have done are not hidden from you. But as for me, my prayer is to you, O oh Lord. At an acceptable time, O oh God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, answer me. With your faithful help, do not let the flood sweep over me, or the deep swallow me up, or the pit close its mouth over me. Please stand as we read the Gospel from 1 Peter in the third chapter. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So, as I have said, throughout this Lenten season, we're going to be looking at the beautiful sweep of the story of our salvation as it's found in the Old Testament. These 39 books, the Hebrew Bible, were the only Bible that existed when Jesus walked on the earth and when the early church was spreading throughout the known world. The 27 books that we now know as the New Testament weren't written down until decades later and not finally authorized as canon for more than 300 years. So for Jesus and for the first disciples, the Old Testament was the Bible. And that Hebrew Bible is just as much a part of Jesus' story as the New Testament. Every story, every verse whispers his name. Those of you who were here last Wednesday, night, last Wednesday night might remember that we began at the beginning, at the first verse of the first book of the Bible, Genesis, 
with the story of Christ in the creation. We saw how Jesus, the living word of God, along with God the Father and God the Spirit, brought the earth and the skies and the seas and every living thing into being from nothing. We saw how everything that was created was good. And then how the sin of our first parents, Adam and Eve, entered into this paradise and corrupted it forever, bringing into the world sickness and anger and pain and war and death. And we saw how, even then, even at the very beginning, God made a promise that he would one day restore all that had been lost and make everything right again by sending his righteous seed, the descendant of Eve, the Messiah. This promise is made in the third chapter of Genesis. Yet here we are, just three chapters later, reading how things have gone from bad to worse. Over the many years since Adam and Eve were banished from the Garden of Eden and their descendants spread out over the earth, we now read that the Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. In fact, people are so given over to sin that God regrets ever creating human beings at all. His sorrow runs deep and he decides to cleanse the earth of its evil by a flood. If you go to the seventh chapter of Genesis and read the story of the flood, you will see that it is a sort of reverse creation. In creation, God separated the waters from the dry land, and in the flood, all the fountains of the deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. And then, just as God had created plants, and then birds, and animals, and then human beings, he now washes all of those away from the face of the earth. He is, in essence, starting over with a clean slate. But there is one thing that we can always, always count on with our merciful God. Whenever there is a disaster, he also always provides a way out, a plan of redemption. Most of us probably learned the story of Noah and the ark when we were just kids. But there is more to the story than a boat full of cute animals and a dove with an olive branch in her beak. In this story, almost everything points to something else. For example, did you know that the Hebrew word teva, which we translate as ark, meaning a box-shaped boat, is only found in two stories in the Bible in the Old Testament. One ark is big enough to hold a tiny world to save Noah and his family and two of every animal. The other ark is just big enough to hold a tiny baby. It's the woven ark that Moses' mother makes to hide him in. Same word. Both Noah and Moses floated above waters in which many others drowned. Both were saved by God for a special purpose, to bring forth a new people after a massive destruction. And both were a foreshadowing of the Savior to come. When Noah was born, his father, Lamech, prophesied that out of the ground the Lord has cursed, this one shall bring us relief from our work and from the painful toil of our hands. Notice that Lamech is purposely repeating the words that God spoke to Adam when he was cast out of the Garden of Eden. At that time, God said, Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Lamech sees this baby Noah and believes that he will be a second Adam, only a much better one. 
So what happens next? The ark building, the animal gathering, the deluge of water. God rewinds creation back to the beginning, when the earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep. After many, many months, the waters finally recede, and Noah and his family and the animals emerge from the ark into a world washed clean and made new. In his speech to this second Adam, God begins by blessing Noah and his sons just as he blessed Adam and Eve. Word for word, he repeats the command that he gave to Adam and Eve. Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. In every way, we are meant to see this second creation as a redemption story. And it's a redemption story that leads us to the redemption story, the story of Jesus. Jesus himself compared his second coming to the days of Noah. He said, For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. The original flood pointed toward the final flood of judgment when the Messiah returns. Just as God chose Noah and his family to be saved, so those who belong to Jesus will be rescued. And just as the earth was recreated after the flood, so there will be a new earth once again, creation redeemed and made perfect once more, a new Garden of Eden. Peter explains in his first letter that we read tonight how just as God saved eight persons through water in the time of the flood, so he now saves you by exchanging your sinfulness for the perfect holiness of Jesus. Jesus suffered and died for the sins of all, the righteous for the unrighteous in order to bring you to God. And as we read in 1 Peter 3, and baptism, which this, the flood, prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When we read about Noah, we are both reading backward to Adam and forward to Jesus. Some of you may know that from ancient times, the church has been pictured as a boat or an ark. We, as Jesus' people, are safe and secure from Satan and eternal death because we are cradled in safety in the body of Christ. And how do we enter that body? Through our baptism, in which our sins are washed away, and we receive the gift of new life through Jesus Christ, the last and best Adam, our Savior and Lord. Held safely by him, we live in expectation and await the new creation with hope. Amen. Our hymn is Baptized in Water, number 456. Thank you.
I invite you to stand as you are able and join with me in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we give our offerings to the work of the church. Let us gather our hearts together as one and offer our prayers to God. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. It is you, loving God, who breathes life into each of us. It is you who forgives the sins of those who are penitent. You are the God of the living. Stretch forth your right hand to save us. You, O Lord, see us who have no strength.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Each week during this Lenten season, we take this time for silent prayer and reflection and meditation. A time to escape from the busyness and the noise of our daily lives and to speak to God and listen to God's voice. So I invite you to enjoy this time of quiet reflection. Receive the Lord's blessing. May the God of light and truth lead you from this place.
May the Savior of the world encourage us to follow the example of his great humility. May the Holy Spirit accompany and guide us. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Our closing hymn is Lord Take My Hand and Lead Me, number 767. Go in peace. Christ is with you.